My boyfriend became addicted to gambling and lost nine out of ten times. In the end, we couldn't even afford rent. Just as we were about to be evicted and forced to sleep on the streets, he found a way for us to make money, by having me sell myself. With no other options left, I reluctantly began my first time as an escort. But I never expected that once would lead to many more times, each one causing me to fall further into depravity and lose my innocence. I stood outside the door of a luxury hotel suite and pressed the buzzer for room 8066. A man wearing only a bath towel answered the door with wet hair and walked inside without saying anything. As soon as I entered, I quickly closed the door behind me, my heart racing. He was the client I had agreed to accompany today, but standing in front of him made me feel helpless. He sat on the edge of his bed looking at me up and down with eyes. That made me uncomfortable. I'll go wash up first. I said softly before walking into his bathroom. As I unzipped my dress through frosted glass doors, I could see him playing with his phone while leaning against his bed, this was my first time observing a stranger's body like this. I don't know how it happened so fast or why it happened at all, within seconds after getting under covers in bed together, he treated my body like a toy that he could easily disassemble and reassemble again. Afterwards, he smoked a cigarette and stuffed a wad of cash into my underwear before going into the shower. I trembled as I put on my clothes and walked out of the room, hearing his laughter behind me. At that time, I didn't understand what men were thinking. Later on, I found out that making women like this gave them a sense of accomplishment. Outside the hotel entrance, under the trees across the street, was a young man waiting for me. He helped me into his car without saying anything along the way. When we got back to our rental house, I rushed to take a shower and looked at myself in the mirror while sobbing uncontrollably. This man was actually my boyfriend whom I met at an internet cafe after dropping out of school. He was only in his twenties but had already ventured out into society with me by his side. We quickly spent all our money and although he found work at a factory, he became addicted to gambling which resulted in us losing everything including rent money. We were about to be evicted and forced onto the streets when he heard from some shady acquaintances about a good way to make money. It's simple. He said. I know someone who wants to find an innocent student girl as company for him, just go talk with him, it's easy. I relied on my boyfriend for food even though deep down inside something felt wrong but too scared to resist so he took me on his motorcycle and brought me to the hotel. I cried in the bathroom for a long time before I could compose myself and come out. But when I did, I saw my boyfriend shaking out all the clothes he had taken off me, counting money on the bed with excitement. He lifted up the money in his hand and said, I didn't expect Jeff to be so generous. Look at all this money. It's much easier than earning it at work. I looked at him without saying anything as he noticed that something was wrong with my mood. He hugged me tightly while comforting me and checking my injuries. With tears streaming down my face, I asked him why he would do this to me. He replied that there was no other way, if they couldn't find a way to make money soon, they would both end up sleeping on the streets. He promised to treat me better from then on. After that humiliating experience. As an escort, I felt depressed for a long time. My boyfriend continued gambling every day and I felt hopeless. One weekend though, my boyfriend came home early and invited me out for dinner at what turned out not to be a restaurant but rather a bar filled with people dancing wildly under red lights. My boyfriend introduced us to Owen, his new boss who apparently wanted us both to help him earn big bucks together. The two men talked non-stop while urging me to drink more alcohol until eventually everything became hazy and blurry. Half consciousness later, I felt someone helping me into a car but also touching me inappropriately which made it difficult for me fight back due to being too weak from drinking too much alcohol earlier. When we arrived back home after some time passed by quickly like nothing happened, or so it seemed, Owen revealed his true intentions. 
your boyfriend sold you off to pay off his debts of 10,000 yuan owed from gambling. He then proceeded by whipping her mercilessly with his belt leaving her bruised and battered. The night was like a nightmare, and it wasn't until dawn that Owen finally left the room. I lay there on the bed, feeling powerless and helpless like a rag doll. I stared blankly at the sky outside through the window. When I heard the sound of the door opening again, fear or hatred made me gather all my strength to jump out of the window to end everything. Once and for all. But Owen caught me just in time before I could do so by choking me with his hands around my neck while stuffing food into my mouth saying. You cost me ten thousand dollars. You better make it back for me. I resigned myself to my fate and began a career as an escort under Owen's arrangements. Owen was very good at marketing, he only targeted high-end customers and packaged me as a pure student, using various methods to find clients with special preferences and bringing them to me. If I didn't cooperate even slightly, I would be beaten severely. Over time, I became afraid of being beaten and obediently accepted all of Owen's arrangements. Besides, entertaining clients, my daily routine consisted of learning the various professional qualities that high-class call girls should possess. Not only were there requirements for body shape and posture, accent and tone of voice, but also a bunch of seemingly high-end knowledge just to cater to the client's topics so as not to disappoint them when they wanted to chat. Every day different men played with my body in various hotels, private residences, or even secret outdoor locations, their only commonality was that most had strange fetishes, mostly sadistic tendencies, some were masochists while others enjoyed role-playing where they forced me into calling them good son while feeding them milk like babies. In just half a year, I witnessed all sorts of weird fetishes which made me feel that this world is incredibly dark. Even ordinary prostitutes are better than me because they satisfy the basic instincts of most men whereas those who came after me were scum. These so-called upper-class people bought me with money not only wanting to ruin my body but also trample on my dignity. I often got hurt, the worst time was when two brothers paid a lot for both spending one night with me together. No matter how much I begged Owen not to send me over there he still did it anyway, fearing resistance from myself he drugged me beforehand. I don't know. Where Owen got those drugs from but once consumed it felt like fire burning throughout my entire body causing panic attacks making roll around on the ground. The door creaked open and two tall men walked in through the blurry light. I felt one of them pick me up while the other undressed me. That night, I was tortured to death and back again, the next day my entire body didn't feel like it belonged to me anymore. In fact, I hadn't belonged to myself. For a long time now, just like a dog tied by Owen's side being driven around at will. No, not even as good as a dog, I didn't want to live anymore so while Owen slept soundly beside me, I turned on the bathroom faucet and without hesitation cut my wrist with broken porcelain. I really don't know if I'm lucky or cheap but somehow managed to be saved once again. Owen was furious, but I was no longer afraid. Weakly, I said, I don't want to live anymore. I've helped you earn so much money. Just let me go. Even if you force me to serve clients again, I'll die with them. If you want to hit me, just kill me. Owen realized that his threats could no longer shake me and changed his tone to try and appease me in every way possible. But I knew he couldn't bear losing his cash cow. Finally Owen agreed to release me on one condition. He wanted us to target a wealthy man named Tony for a big score. Tony had divorced his wife six months ago after she cheated on him with another man and took all of his money before leaving him. Tony was a workaholic who didn't care much for women or going home often, however, the betrayal by his ex-wife left him feeling depressed for quite some time. Owen wanted me to seduce Tony into marrying me so we could both get our hands on his vast fortune while Owen retired from the business altogether. Without hesitation. I agreed as long as it meant getting rid of Owen, what did I have to fear about seducing an older man, 
so Owen cut off our previous business dealings and moved us both into the same city where Tony lived in order for us to prepare ourselves better. He presented himself as a small businessman with assets mainly overseas who brought back home my sister, me, who had been studying abroad. As someone knowledgeable and beautiful at such a young age, it wasn't hard for people like Tony, who were used dealing with high society individuals, to be impressed by my presence alone when introduced by Owen during their discussions about music theory since Tony loved playing pipa, a Chinese stringed instrument. Things progressed smoothly beyond my expectations because even though Tony was experienced in dealing with many things including women's charms, I was able to lower his guard by acting like a respectful junior and not making any moves on him at first. After Tony had been appointed to a new position, I began showing off my charms in front of him without being too obvious. My natural beauty made me look innocent and pure but the experience of dealing with many men before gave me an air of seductiveness that girls my age lacked. I was so good at playing this game that even though Tony knew he shouldn't be tempted by me, he couldn't help himself from. Admiring my body when we were alone together discussing music theory or other topics. One rainy night, Owen invited us both over for dinner under the pretext of celebrating my birthday. He kept pouring drinks for us while secretly adding something into our food. Feigning drunkenness early on in the evening, I excused myself and went back to our room where I waited for Tony's arrival. When he finally stumbled into the wrong room due to Owen's misleading directions, he found me lying on the bed looking helpless and drunk, which only served to make him more attracted to me than ever before. That night we indulged ourselves completely although it seemed like I was too drunk to know what was happening around me, in reality I was fully aware of everything going on between us as well as how much pleasure it brought Tony. The next morning however, Tony woke up feeling shocked yet suspicious about what had happened since he realized that he had fallen prey within our territory, something that wasn't easy for anyone else outside our circle to do. But Owen and I were prepared for every possible reaction from him beforehand so we immediately started putting up an act. Owen played his role perfectly as an older brother who felt outraged after seeing his sister being taken advantage of while beating up Tony mercilessly, meanwhile, pretending to be a chaste woman who cried tears of blood while asking, how could you do this to me, a friend who trusted you, before cutting my wrist in front of everyone. Only someone as ruthless as myself could have pulled off such an act and deceived Tony so completely. After some pretense, Owen took me away without mentioning anything about Tony's compensation. Instead, he dispelled his suspicions. We disappeared for three whole months before reappearing in Tony's life. The timing was crucial, leaving too soon would raise suspicion, but staying away too long could risk losing Tony to another fairy. During those three months, I wasn't idle. Besides nursing my injuries, I put all my effort into training on the pipa technique. Everything went according to plan, the pipa was the perfect excuse for me to reunite with Tony. Owen had already found out that Tony would be a special guest judge at this year's city pipa. Competition The guest list is always kept secret and only known by insiders. In front of Tony, I portrayed myself as an innocent girl who loved playing the pipa and had come back home to visit family when she heard about the influential pipa competition in town and decided to sign up just so she could see other skilled players. I knew his character well, he was proud and didn't like favoritism, he probably wanted me to enter the finals based on my own abilities so that it would make a good story when we met again later. Besides practicing on the pipa, all my time was spent on beauty treatments because I wanted to appear even more beautiful than what he remembered from our last encounter so that he couldn't resist falling for me again. Thanks to these few months of preparation and determination not to give up until achieving my goal, both physically and mentally were in their best condition. Ever before. I told myself that I am a noble heiress who has returned from studying abroad. I want nothing less than becoming a wealthy man's wife and completely saying goodbye to my past. Three months flew by quickly as if they never happened before, then came time for the big event, the PIPA competition began. Thanks due diligence and natural talent, 
I passed the preliminary round even though I had only started playing the pipa recently. I knew that at least until the semi-finals would there be special guest judges participating in the evaluation process, but with so many skilled players in this competition, I wasn't very confident. This was when Owen came into play, he used his connections and money to get me through to the semi-finals. Knowing that my level might not be enough to make it any further than this stage, I put a lot of effort into preparing for my performance during overtime. In the semi-finals. That one performance left a deep impression on both audience and judges alike, while not being the best player, I was undoubtedly the most beautiful. Dressed up as Qin Wai's famous courtesan Chen Yuan Yuan with half-opened lips and four-stringed pipa between my fingers, every pluck and strum conveyed an air of romance. On distant judge seats where faces were blurred by stage lights from below, I could feel one pair of eyes burning. Onto me like they wanted to strip off all my clothes. Pretending not to notice anything unusual after finishing my piece gracefully on stage without looking back once again towards Tony's direction before walking down calmly alongside Owen. We returned to our hotel room discussing what our next move should be when we received a phone call informing us that we had made it through today's finals after passing through yesterday's semi-finals. I smiled. Knowingly, Tony had taken bait hook line and sinker. Even if I did have some natural talent for music or performing arts which is highly unlikely given such short learning time frame how could anyone enter finals? It must have been Tony who pulled some strings behind the scenes because he was more obsessed with me than even I imagined, going against his own principles of impartiality just for me, alternatively, men are hypocritical creatures driven. By desire. For the sake of lust, they can throw away all principles and beliefs. Before the finals, there was a banquet for the qualifying players and judges. I dressed up carefully and attended. I deliberately chose an inconspicuous seat and stayed away from the crowd while other players went to toast with the judges. It was just to be alone and create an opportunity for Tony to approach me. Unexpectedly, I underestimated my own charm. Different. Men came to chat with me constantly, some were contestants, some were staff members. I was annoyed by them but noticed a familiar figure out of the corner of my eye. So I had a plan in mind, intentionally turning my back on Tony, then throwing suggestive glances at the man in front of me as if signaling him to follow me. When we walked into the garden outside the banquet hall, I continued using various imperceptible gestures and expressions to give ambiguous hints to this flirtatious man so that he would become bolder. All these actions were difficult for Tony who followed us from afar to notice, in his eyes it seemed like a stranger had tricked me into going into the garden where he tried something inappropriate with me. The moment arrived when this flirtatious man held my hand under my encouraging gaze, suddenly I changed face and screamed, what do you want? Poor guy hadn't reacted yet when. Tony rushed over and knocked him down with one punch. Taking advantage of this perfect opportunity where he played hero saving beauty, Tony reunited with me again. He chased after, panicked, me out of hotel where it's far from crowds, here he let down all defenses against himself as he explained his lovesickness that night due only being drunk but having true feelings towards me. We struggled back and forth two or three times before finally forgiving. Him hesitantly while expressing gratitude tactfully for what he did earlier. Tony was completely conquered by me. We soon started dating officially, and within two months he proposed to me which greatly surprised me. Just as I was about to fly up the branch and become a phoenix, someone's appearance almost ruined everything for Owen and me, Tony's ex-wife suddenly asked to meet with me. I didn't want anything to do with her, but she said on the phone. I know all your past, if you don't want those erotic legends of yours appearing on Tony's desk tonight, it's best that we talk. Owen and I were panicking like mice on hot bricks but had no choice but to go along with it. In the coffee shop, I looked at this woman who dressed shabbily yet had an air of hostility in her eyes, I was ready to be accused or scolded as a fox spirit but what Tony's ex-wife said next surprised me greatly. I'm not interested in your affair with Tony. My relationship with him ended long ago. 
But Tony is too ruthless when we were together for so many years while he traveled frequently, leaving me alone at home. All I did was find someone else for comfort only to be humiliated into being called a slut by him then kicked out without any compensation. Tony's ex-wife ranted for half an hour before finally getting down to business. I came here this time because I wanted us to discuss our cooperation. Tony's ex-wife made a simple request. She wanted me to pretend to be kidnapped and extort a large sum of money from Tony as her deserved compensation. She said, As long as you cooperate and get the money, I will naturally leave and not cause any trouble for your new life with Tony. And by the way, do you want to know if you or the money is more important in Tony's heart? I really wanted to say that I didn't want to know, but I agreed anyway. However, I also made my own conditions. Looking into her eyes, I spoke frankly, I don't trust you. How do I know if you're after the money or jealous that Tony wants to marry me? What if you actually harm me? In the end we compromised, I would go along with her plan for this kidnapping act but Owen had to be involved throughout it all in order to ensure my safety. Before parting ways, I asked how she knew about my past when working as a call girl in another distant city, it seemed too coincidental that Tony's ex-wife found out. She didn't give a direct answer but instead smiled meaningfully and said, everyone has those few old friends they don't want contact with anymore. After returning home, I explained everything carefully to Owen and we discussed countermeasures at length while finalizing many details. Tony and my wedding was scheduled three months later but this sudden kidnapping act made me realize that saying goodbye completely to our past may not be so easy. At this moment, sitting in an abandoned car factory next to Owen and Tony's ex-wife who were working together efficiently on their self-directed play where they pretended that they kidnapped me while shopping earlier today. Tony's ex-wife even intentionally video called him acting hysterical. After being abandoned by him. However, Tony remained calm, after all they were married for many years and he knew that his ex-wife appeared arrogant but was actually timid and unlikely to cause any real harm. Tony refused to pay the high ransom, warning his ex-wife to release me quickly. He promised her some money, far less than the ransom, as a gesture of goodwill due to their past relationship. His ex-wife became furious, picked up a gasoline can. Next to her, poured some on the ground, lit it with a matchstick proving it was real gasoline and then threatened that if Tony didn't pay up soon she would burn me alive, Tony remained silent while his ex-wife struggled with what to do next, she couldn't bring herself to really hurt me but also couldn't back down. Suddenly Owen who had been standing by in disguise dodged around the gas can and scratched my body before threatening Tony fiercely with his own device. We were all shocked. I knew Owen was ruthless, but it was chilling to see that he didn't care about my safety at all. There was gasoline everywhere and even a small spark could have disastrous consequences, Tony didn't know much about Owen's background and didn't want to take any risks, so he finally agreed to their demands and put the money in the designated location where Tony's ex-wife's lover would be secretly watching. Owen and Tony's ex-wife hurried off to get the money while I made an excuse to quickly go shower and change clothes, separating from them. As soon as they left, I jumped into another car, drove south towards the suburbs until I found a lake where I sank the car with gasoline inside. Then I walked to another place where I took a taxi straight to the high-speed rail station and headed for Dunguan. Yes, I wanted to return to the city that held all of my dark. History records in order to completely escape from Owen. And my boyfriend would be waiting for me there. Coincidentally, after spending so much time with Tony, I had gained enough ability to avoid being detected by Owen while gathering some information on him. After hearing about their plan from Tony's ex-wife, it suddenly dawned on me that my past was his biggest leverage against me, something he would never let go of. If I followed his design and Married Tony as planned, then not only would become just a tool for him constantly trying acquire more wealth from Tony but also always under his threat. So instead of following through with his plan I sent someone out track down Tony's ex-wife hoping she might have some way out of this mess. 
but what we discovered instead is that her lover who brought me here before selling me off is none other than my own boyfriend, the world really is small, after. Using me as collateral debt payment he finally quit gambling, probably too ashamed, and left Nguyen. But he had no skills and things only got worse for him until he met Tony's ex-wife, who was attracted to his handsome face, leading to the events that followed. My boyfriend also revealed my secrets to Tony's ex-wife, but after I contacted him he begged me to forgive him and said that he still loved me, it was just that before he was blinded by. Greed he asked me to help him get rid of the old woman. He spouted a bunch of nonsense, but only the last sentence was sincere. So I decided to use this opportunity and set up a trap within a trap with kidnapping involved. Before boarding the high-speed train back to Dunguan, Owen and Tony's wife should have already arrived at their so-called hiding spot where they were drugged beforehand by my boyfriend. I reported them using a disguised device. Before throwing away my phone used for reporting crime, leaving Owen and Tony behind as I made my escape. In the luxury hotel room 8066, I looked around thinking how this really is an inevitable room number, where my tragic fate began and will end here too. According to plan, my boyfriend would have already rented out a room in Dunguan with money waiting for me there. And since I told him about all of the valuable jewelry given by Tony along with Years worth of savings on myself, there's no way he'd run off with everything without hesitation. As soon as I recognized him upon entering our room together, I immediately played the role of an old lover who never forgot her feelings towards him while pretending not knowing anything about his recent past experiences being cheated out of money or controlled by an older woman like myself, which wasn't true. He fell right into it believing every word coming from me saying how much she loves him unconditionally. After walking into our hotel room together, my boyfriend eagerly hugged onto me tightly while smelling like gasoline. I pushed him away playfully, saying, You smell terrible. Go take a shower first. He quickly took a bath and jumped back onto the bed to cuddle with me. But he ended up choking on the gasoline fumes and urged me to hurry up and go wash myself. I smiled seductively at him while handing over a glass of water before swaying my hips towards the bathroom. Five minutes later, I finished taking my shower and found that my boyfriend had already passed out on the bed. So I doubled down on his dose of sleeping pills in order for him not to wake up until tomorrow morning. Walking over, I slapped him twice hard across his face as revenge for selling me off to Owen. If it weren't for his help in getting rid of Owen earlier by acting alongside me, I would have killed him, but now? Now that I opened up the bag filled with money, looking at all those banknotes made me feel incredibly satisfied, knowing that when he wakes up finding himself without any money or girlfriend will be worse than death, and I will take this money to get plastic surgery, obtain a new identity, and start a new life. I left the hotel with my backpack on my back without looking back. Calmly this time around I immediately found out what went wrong with it all along. Gertie. This woman really isn't simple, she actually forged documents. It turns out that I underestimated her abilities greatly. What did you find? Jake followed behind me and pushed me from behind. Aren't you supposed to check your system? I held back my anger and turned around handing over the appraisal report document back into his hands, no need for checking anymore. We didn't issue this particular one. Bullshit. He snatched the document back from me and flipped to the last page, then aggressively shoved it in front of my face. Is this your chapter? Is this your signature? It is ours. I pushed his hand away, but both the stamp and signature were scanned and printed. If you want to check, please bring us the original. Printed. He looked at me skeptically before taking it back to look again. In less than half a moment's time, I saw him suddenly widen his eyes. Fuck. How dare they try to deceive me. He threw the appraisal report document onto the ground after cursing loudly. He rushed a few steps behind the reception desk. Before I could react to what he was doing, I saw him dragging someone out. Gertie? So Gertie came with him too. 
Maybe she was scared by his previous actions and hid behind the reception desk. You lying woman. Jake pushed Gertie to the ground and pointed at the appraisal report, cursing loudly. I knew it was fake. You wanted to cheat me shamelessly. Gertie knelt on the ground, holding onto Jake's leg and crying loudly. I didn't lie to you. It really is yours. The problem must be with their results. I swear that our child is really yours. Hearing her words made me furious, but I bit my lip and refrained from saying anything. This mess between these two people had nothing to do with me. It's mine? Jake chuckled. All right then, today I'll take a chance and sleep with you again. If it turns out that it's mine then fine, but if not, you better watch out. He pointed at me and asked coldly. What about her? With an indifferent expression on my face, I led them into the reception room where they filled in forms, paid fees and provided samples before telling Jake to come back in a week for it. Well, the story has come to an end. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We have more videos available. Please visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel.